What's up everybody, I am Legend here with the Ditto Music YouTube channel and today we're going to be doing a home studio setup guide and how to record music at your home from the gear that you need to buy to how to set everything up so that you can get that high quality professional sound that you're looking for. And if you find today's video useful to you, be sure to hit the like, leave a comment down below and also subscribe to this YouTube channel for all of our future videos that may help you make your best music. If you're a musician who's looking for the way to make their best music, chances are at some point you're going to want to release that music. And so that's where Ditto Music comes into play. Now with Ditto's distribution, you're able to release your music to major streaming platforms like Spotify, YouTube, TikTok, Apple Music, and still retain 100% of the revenue that you make from your streams. It's really easy to do and we've got a 30 day free trial linked for you down in the description below if you wanna give it a try on today. And also Ditto is going to be giving away one third generation Scarlet Solo audio interface to one of you who comment today. So as you're watching the video, make sure that you leave a like and drop a comment down below if it's a question about the equipment that I talk about on today or maybe your own suggestions on equipment and software that you use. Either way, let's keep things going on. First and foremost, let me preface all of this with the most important thing that you need is the knowledge to make music, the how to. So your gear, as much as people say it doesn't matter, yes, it does matter in terms of quality, but how you use that gear also is very important to how you produce your music. I say that to say you don't need the most expensive and you don't need the highest quality stuff. You just need something that you're able to get started with. There are just some basic pieces of equipment that you will need in order to start your music production journey, starting with probably the most important piece, which is a computer. Any computer that's been released in the last four or five years should be good enough as long as your specs are adequate. You're looking at a quad or six core processor minimum, 16 gigabytes of RAM minimum, and 256 gigabytes of SSD storage minimum. All these things I say minimum because the more you can have of each of these, the better. Next up, after you've chosen your computer, you wanna start thinking about what digital audio workstation or DAW you're going to use to make your music in. Now, the software that's pretty much been the industry standard in terms of making music for a while has been Avid's Pro Tools. One of the most complicated and capable DAWs you can probably get, but it's, I would say, for the more advanced users who know what they're doing. So don't go out and purchase something like Pro Tools unless you already know what you're doing or you're willing to sit down and learn. Otherwise, if you don't have the time to do that or you've never even opened a DAW on your computer in the first place, you wanna start probably with something more simple. If you have a Mac computer, that's gonna be a free software called GarageBand. There's also a few PC alternatives to this. One is called Cakewalk and another by the name of Reaper. I don't know too much about those DAWs other than that they are free and a lot of people recommend them, so you might wanna give those a try. If you're looking for something more advanced for either Mac or PC, you can go with FL Studio, Ableton, Reason, Cubase. There's so many options. Literally, if you Google best DAWs for music production, PC, see what comes up, and then based on what you see, you can make an informed decision there or try out some free trials. Now just remember, there is no audio quality difference in these DAWs, so whether you go for a free one or one that costs $3,000, your audio is not gonna sound any better. You still have to process the audio the same way in every single DAW. It's just certain DAWs might have better or worse features, better or worse stock plugins, one that you prefer over another one. So really, that depends entirely on you. So we've got our DAW and our computer. Now we need to get our audio into our DAW, which is via an audio interface. An audio interface allows you to record your vocals or a physical instrument that you have like a keyboard or a guitar directly into your DAW so that you can capture that audio and manipulate it the same way that you would any other piece of audio. These also allow you to hook up studio quality monitors to your computer so that when you're in the mixing process uh, you can play your songs through the loudspeakers and see what kind of mix decisions you want to make. Now, of course, if you wanna plug your headphones directly into the headphone jack of your computer to produce your music, you can do that. However, there's different issues you can run into doing this from having buzzes and artifacts in your audio, the quality is not as good, and you're definitely going to be limited to what kind of microphone you can use on your computer because most USB microphones are limited in the dynamic range that they have, and you're also missing out on some really key and helpful features that audio interfaces come with. 
For instance, I have an Audient Evo 4, which is a $150 audio interface that you can hook up your monitors, your microphone to. It has a built-in auto gain feature where you tap two buttons, you start singing or rapping lines from your song, and it'll automatically set the levels for your mic to where you're not too low or too high in your audio. It's perfectly set or a Focusrite Scarlett Solo, for instance. I used to own one of these and they had a really cool feature on it called the air feature, where when you tap that button, it adds a little bit more of a higher frequency to your voice. And when you record with this feature on, it prints some of that airy tone into your vocal. So it gives you a unique sound. Which audio interface you choose depends on what features you want available and also how much money you're able to spend for the quality that you want to get. Audio interfaces can run anywhere from $100 all the way to to a couple thousand dollars. So really, it depends on your budget. But for most home studios, unless you're in a really big band and you need multiple outputs to record all these different instruments or choirs or something like that, most home studios will be fine with one of the more simpler, cheaper audio interfaces like a Scarlett Solo or an Evo 4. So now we have to get into how you're going to hear the audio in your studio. And of course we have monitors, and headphones. Of these two, I would probably say you want to buy your headphones first unless you already own a professional pair. And the reason for this is because it's a common scenario that in your home studio, people don't want to hear you blaring and blasting your music all day, every day, especially if you're doing music for a living. So headphones are going to save your life probably and get you from getting evicted. But also you're going to want to have a good pair of mixing headphones anyway, because when you start to mix your projects, you want to be able to hear every detail of that audio and if you plan on doing any kind of mixing or engineering yourself on your music then you want to get a pair of headphones like the Audio Technica M50X which is one of the most common pairs of headphones I've seen professionals use like Drake and Timbaland plenty more I'm sure I also really like the Austrian Audio Hi X55 closed back headphones because they have a lot of space in the ear cups but all in all you just want a pair of headphones that's going to offer you the most objective sound you want a professionally tuned pair of headphones with a really flat sound that's going to let you listen to and manipulate your audio basically from scratch. In terms of monitors, you can get some decent ones as cheap as three or four hundred dollars. I personally have the KRK Rocket 5 speakers. Uh, those were the cheapest ones that you could get. And the reason I bought the cheapest is because I don't really mix my music on the monitors too much as it is. I am so used to my home recording that I use my headphones most of the time. So that may be true for you. However, if you want to get into a professional pair of studio monitors to start mixing your music, you can use something like the Yamaha. Yamaha HS5s, which are on the lower end of the spectrum, or if you want to go a little bit more professional, you can get the HS8s, which have quickly become one of the industry standards for studio monitors. All right, so we're almost there. We almost have every bit of gear. The last thing that we need is, of course, something to record our voice. And so that's going to be our microphone. Um, if you go with a USB option, this is going to be cheaper, obviously. However, the quality is not quite going to be the same as one of those you know, more professional microphones that you would find with those large diaphragms and XLR uh, connectors. That doesn't mean though that USB microphones are bad. If you want to go with a cheaper option and you don't want to buy an audio interface, you can get a Fiffin microphone. These are probably the best USB microphones that you can buy other than Blue Yeti. But if you've got the money and an interface, I would say a middle of the road microphone is going to be the best bang for your buck in your home studio. You don't have to get something as expensive as a $3,700 Neumann, okay? Unless you have the money and you want to. I personally have a $300 Blue Microphones Bluebird SL has gotten me through quite a bit of projects, professional projects even, that I've recorded with Grammy-nominated artists. But really, when it comes down to what mic you want to buy for your studio, just remember what type of voice you have, what type of sound you want, because every mic is not created equal. Like I said, the Shure might accentuate the bass in your voice. Meanwhile, something like the Bluebird SL, I've noticed, is more so favoring the mid-range. With that said, if you're able to buy one of the cheaper microphones like the Bluebird SL for two or three hundred dollars and then use some of that other money that you would have spent on a more expensive microphone to treat the acoustics of your room, I feel like that would give you a better value than if you were to record in a completely untreated room with 
a super expensive microphone. So to close out, I'm gonna put on the screen a mock studio setup that I would buy if I were just getting started today with the technology that is out now. For my computer, I would go with the M1 MacBook Air for around $850 refurbished. Included free with that MacBook Air in macOS is GarageBand, so that is my doll. I don't need to pay for that. For an audio interface, I'd buy a Scarlett Solo for around $120. A pair of tracking headphones, maybe some Sonys for around $30 to $40. My go-to Bluebird SL microphone for $300. And if I wanted to buy monitors, I would go for the Yamaha HS5s for 400 bucks altogether. Everything would be $1,700 for a full studio setup. So a full on studio setup for under $2,000, I would say is a solid price to get started in making music. And of course you can throw in your MIDI controllers or drum pads if you want to, and that might take you closer to that 2000. But overall, this is going to be the best bang for your buck and one that I think you're gonna get a lot of mileage out of over the coming years. Of course, if you wanna go with PC, you just get those equivalents. I can't say whether or not it's going to be the same price, but that option is there as well. This was a home studio setup guide for all of you out there who want to learn how to set up your own home studio, what gear you need. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below in the comment section. Be sure to check out Ditto Music's distribution services. Subscribe to this channel if you're not already subscribed for future videos just like this one. And I'll see you in the next one. Let's go.